hospice care and, and elderly people with their problems. In the babies, we've got pediatric tumors, we have seizure disorders and gen genetic disorders, autism, and lots of problems that benefit greatly from cannabis. And it's important to let your friends know if they have children with these issues that cannabis can be beneficial to them. The government loves to scare you and make you feel that this is dangerous to the developing brain. There is no decent evidence for that. And in fact, it seems like it's an important element in a developing brain. If you look at what the endocannabinoid system does, helping with eating and sleeping and resting and relaxing and forgetting and protecting, what happens in the human, as with any animal, is this system too wears down as we age. And then we're more prone to those diseases associated with with the breakdown of a natural system in our body. So elderly patients tend to get anxious and tend to get depressed. They tend to not sleep well and so forth. And they tend to develop cancers and other degenerative diseases, all of which are benefited with the use of cannabinoids and cannabis. Hold off on a lot of these problems or protect us from these problems. Alzheimer's dementia is a very interesting uh, situation. The researchers in, in recent years have shown that there's no better preventive uh, chemical. None of the pharmaceuticals, THC, is the best molecule in order to prevent the deposition or inhibit the deposition of beta amyloid plaque material into the nervous system, damaging the nervous system in Alzheimer's dementia. THC works better than anything else. Uh, children with uh, optic tract gliomas, some of the patients that I've uh, seen the imaging on and, and treated myself have huge tumors when they're first discovered, both sides of the brain, uh, about the size of a lemon, I mean big tumors. And the first kid that I started with, the parents had talked to the the uh, radiation oncologist, and they talked to the surgeon, and they talked to the chemo docs. The chemo docs and the radiation docs said, we've got a treatment for you. And when they asked the hard questions, they knew that their child was going to be permanently damaged from the treatment. And so they thanked the docs and said, well, think about it, and they came up to see me. And we started the baby on a little drop of THC-rich cannabis oil on the pacifier twice a day. And this started out with him sleeping well, and actually he would start giggling and laughing at about 30 to 45 minutes into the treatment, and then he would fall asleep and have a nice long nap. It was only about two or three months later that the next imaging was done to see the tumor fading away. And by the time six months had passed, still treating the child twice daily with an increasing dose of cannabis oil, the tumor had pretty much disappeared. So, very exciting for everybody involved. Now they're using more CBD-rich oil as the time goes along, and we're probably at about a point now, three, four years out, to where we're gonna just uh, discontinue the daytime dose and, and go on with a maintenance dose. It had an experience of seeing a couple other babies with tumors who did not brain tumors who did not respond very well. Uh, in other childhood tumors, some uh, sarcomas and some other uh, lesions that are very difficult to treat, I've seen some great results. What we're trying to do is be able to develop the markers to where we'll know which cancers are gonna be sensitive. And this makes a difference. And the tumors are not all the same. Even tumors within the same class, like the glioblastoma multiforme, some of these respond very well, and others do not, and even in high doses. So we don't know which ones are going to respond and which ones are not.